One of the questions that our support team gets asked most often is how to troubleshoot and solve P-delta divergence issues in RISA 3D models. In this video, we'll take a look at a workflow that can be used for a model that has P-delta issues. There are two main reasons for P-delta divergences. One is that the model is simply unstable. The second is that the model is too flexible and therefore cannot resist the applied loads and any additional P-delta shears that are on the model. So let's take a quick dive into a few different ways that we can use to investigate and solve P-delta divergences in RISA 3D. So we have this first model here. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on our shapes so we can see them. So we have some wide flange columns and wide flange beams. You'll notice that the boundary conditions in this case are all pinned. And additionally, in the X direction, all the beams are hinged. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up the load combination spreadsheet. And we'll see here that we have four load combinations, all which have P-delta enabled on their combination. And so with that done, I can go ahead and solve the batch in the envelope. Now the solution's interrupted and we get an error message telling us that there's P-delta divergence at node N4 and load combination one, and that the model may be unstable. And so to investigate this more, I'm gonna click okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to disable our P-delta analysis on that first combination and I'm going to solve that current combination by itself. So we really want to find out if the model and that under that particular combination is actually unstable. So when the combination finishes running, we do get this unstable model warning, basically that instabilities were detected in the model. Additionally, Reset 3D will automatically lock the degrees of freedom where the instability is occurring. Additionally, we can see in the node reaction spreadsheet here that N14 has been locked for rotation in the MZ direction. And so if I click yes, we can also see this graphically. So it's going to show us and highlight us node N14 as the issue. So this tells us that we need to either reduce the number of releases that impact this particular node, either by adding fixed boundary conditions or by changing the beam releases to fix. And so in this case, for demo purposes, I'm going to close out of all of these conditions. And we're going to go ahead and change these beam end reaction conditions to fixed. So the first thing I'm going to do under my results, I'm just going to clear the results. Then I'll go get a top view of the model and I'll just do a highlight selection of those members. And here we can come into the properties panel with all the members selected and click on the I release to change the I and the J release to fully fixed. We can go back to an ISO view. So we now have those fully fixed. Let's go ahead and back into our load combination spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and just solve this combination again, since that's the one that we're concerned with. And we see we no longer have any instability issues in this particular combination. So I'm going to go ahead and re-enable P-delta analysis on that combination. And I'm going to solve the batch in the envelope solution for all the combinations. So once we see the completed solution, we know that we no longer have any P-delta divergence issues in this particular model. So let's take a look at a second model in order to evaluate other options for solving P-delta divergence issues. So this model has moment frames in both directions, so we know that the structure is stable. However, when we solve the batch and envelope solution, we get a P-delta divergence in load combination 2. So we get our error message telling us again that we have a P-delta divergence at N22 in load combination 2. And so if we click OK, we first want to check, just like we did in the last example, that our model is stable. So I'm going to go into load combinations. And for load combination 2, I'm going to go ahead and disable P-delta just like we did last time. And I'm going to go ahead and solve that individual combination now. So this tells us that the model is stable under the applied loads and that the additional P-delta shears are to blame for the divergence issues. So at this point, it really helps to think of a P-delta failure as an elastic buckling of your model. It may be localized buckling in one particular member, or it may be a general buckling of the entire frame. So with this in mind, we can proceed by reducing the factor on the dead load applied in load combination two. So here, I've already done that. We can see we, we have load combinations five, six, and seven are actually some test cases that I created. And so load combination two has a dead load of 1.2. And that dead load is what is used to calculate those secondary shears in P-delta analysis. 
And so I'm gonna reduce that dead load to say 0 0.75, 0 0.65, 0 0.525. So we can run these different iterations of the combination to figure out when we're actually going to get a solution. So if we choose to run the first reduced load combination, this dead load at 0.75, we can see that we still get a P-delta divergence. So for this example, the load combination with 0.525 dead is the first to actually give us real results. So if I go ahead and run that combination, However, if we go ahead and look at, for instance, maybe the deflected shape of the structure, we can see that we have some really huge deflections on the model. And if we want to go ahead and look at the magnitude of these, we can open up the node deflection spreadsheet and see that in our Z direction, for instance, we'll go ahead and do a sort by absolute max and min. We can see that we have something like 109 inches of deflection. So obviously entirely too much deflection for this small little frame. So this tells us that we need to add stiffness or restraint to the model in the Z direction. And so the quickest way to do this is to add or change some of the boundary conditions to fixed. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So let's turn off the deflected shape. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of randomly select a few different frames to make fixed. So we'll choose these two on the side here. We'll choose these two in the middle. And then we'll go ahead and choose these two in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and select those six. So with all these nodes selected, I can go ahead and look in my properties panel. So I see all six nodes are selected. And I want to go ahead and fix these for rotation. And so I'm going to click on one of the rotations here. And I'm going to choose this to be fixed. I can use this checkbox to set the boundary codes for all the directions to the same code as I've chosen. So now with those fixed conditions, I'm going to go back to the Home tab and back to our Load Combination Spreadsheet. And I'm going to re-enable P-Delta Analysis for Combination 2. We can then resolve the model using Load Combination 2 with the full dead load to see that the structure is no longer unstable and that the joint deflections are reasonable. To confirm, we can enable the deflected shape as well as open the Node Deflection Spreadsheet and sort to show the maximum deflections. For more information about the P-Delta procedure used in this video and in RESA 3D, visit the RESA Help section P-Delta. And as always, if you have additional questions, please feel free to contact our support department at support at